Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to 1010KSIR, KSR.com and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Your brush beat diggers have welcomed in the Weld Central High School Rebels. We're already 7 minutes, 49 minutes into quarter one. Brush took the opening kickoff as Weld Central won the toss and deferred. And Brush marched down the field and punched it in from inside the five-yard line on a Richie Bruno one. They're up seven to nothing. Weld Central's first offensive drive of the game currently underway. Wasn't Eric Rico's greatest kickoff. We apologize for the technical difficulties to start our program this evening. I'm Tyler Carmen with you from Beat Digger Stadium. We are in brush, flying solo tonight. So all sorts of problems to start here. Nevertheless, seven minutes to go in the first. Your Beat Diggers are up on Weld Central, seven to nothing. We'll get into starting lineup and opening kickoff and the ads and all that here in a minute. As Weld Central goes out of the shotgun and hands it off to number 21, Marcelo Rossi. Ludgate in on the tackle. It's also senior night as Rossi's first carry goes for a couple yards. Ball's right at the 50-yard line. Quarterback for the Weld Central Rebels is Jace Cornelius. He's a junior. He fakes the handoff, rolls to his right, goes across the middle, pass falls incomplete. First attempt of the game for Cornelius falls to the ground. And that was third down, so it's now fourth and nine for the Rebels. It looks like they'll bring in a punt unit. Your opening kickoff was brought to you by Buildings by Design. First impressions are important. Buildings by Design will make your vision a reality. Visit buildsbydesign.com. As I mentioned before, it is senior night. I'll get into the starters here in a minute. Well, Central punter gets off a booming kick. He kicked that from about his own 35, and that ball's going to stop right in front of the goal post. Nearly a 75-yard punt. Good grief. With the roll, obviously. Return man for Brush lets it bounce into the end zone for a touchback, so Brush will start over here after going up 7-0 on their first possession. Brush is 4-2 overall, but more important, they're 2-0 and in the league as they welcome in the Rebels, who they themselves are 0-2 in the league. So pretty big league matchup here is this 2A classification. As Coach Rosenbach mentioned in the beat Blast Blastoff, appears to be wide open. And your beat diggers have a really good chance to put themselves in a great position to make the playoffs with a win here tonight as Tanner Ludgate carries it for about five yards. He had a big carry of about 25 on that first possession to help set up that scoring drive. Two receivers to, or I'm sorry, a receiver to either side as Richie Bruno gets the handoff off the right side, picks up about four. It'll be third and one. Bruno scored with about 8-10 to go in that first quarter. Coach Rosenbrock will sub a couple guys out here. Beat Diggers are in their home unis. Maroon jerseys, maroon helmets with the gray pants. Well, Central in their away whites. Blue numbers, blue helmets. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. Eric Rico is going to fake the handoff. He's going to bootleg to the right. They gave Bruno the first down on that last carry. And Eric Rico scrambles around the right side for about five. We'll see where they place it. It's the far side of the field. Looks to be dead center. So now second and five for your beat diggers. Iker and Proctor are split out to either side. Ludgate and Bruno in the backfield. Rico under center. Well, Central sneaks a couple guys up into the box. Their safeties are playing basically within the tackle box. Both of them were up within five yards of the defensive line. 
This Ludgate goes for four here. Now it is third and one. Same formation here. Bruno and Ludgate in the backfield. Turn around, give it to Bruno. Bruno gets across the 40. First down picked up. Give him a couple yards and first down. The Diggers would be wise to rely on big number 44. Richie Bruno averaging 118 yards a game. Leads his team. Tanner Ludgate and Eric Rico both averaging over 50 themselves. Eric Rico is going to run that bootleg again. He's going out to the left this time. He's looking for his sideline. He'll get there. I think he'll pick up a couple. Three and a half to go in the first brush up. Seven nothing. They give Rico three yards. Second and seven from their own 44-yard line. This drive started back at the 20-yard line. Brush just methodically moving down the field here. Iker will be lined up tight inside and left. He comes in motion left to right now. Turn around, give it to Bruno again. Bruno powers ahead. Gets down right at the 50-yard line. Give him six yards. He'll be just shy of a first. Well, Central going to sub some linemen out. Another third and one right at the 50-yard line. Man in motion again, left to right. Give it to him. Same play, Bruno. First down, picked up, and a couple more. Down to the 46. Gain of four and another first down for Brush, just marching it right down the field. We apologize for the technical difficulties once again for uh, the start of our broadcast. I was trying to figure it out. I don't have great stats for that opening drive for Brush, but it happened in a hurry. This drive much slower, but chunks of yards each time as Tanner Ludgate takes it across the 40. They place him down at the 40, give him six yards. Tanner Ludgate. My stat book says four carries, but again, I missed that opening drive, but seemed to be going to Tanner early and often here to start this game. Man of motion left to right again for Brush. Do a little misdirection. They give it to Sanchez. Sanchez makes a man miss in the backfield. Avoids a tackle for a loss. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain for Juan Sanchez. Brush on a little mini two-game winning streak. Trying to make it three. They handled Sterling last week in Sterling. Juan Sanchez had maybe the play of the game. As he twirled and pirouetted in for a score in the second quarter. On a play that by all means he should have been tackled in the backfield. Instead he scampers in from about 12 yards out. It wasn't long after that that Axton Haswell had his strip and score there. And that put Brush up by three scores and the game was pretty much over by that point. Speaking of Sterling, Will Central's already played Sterling. They lost to Sterling. So they're fighting for their playoff lives as well. No gain on third down. Brush is going to go for it here on fourth. It's about fourth and a long four. Turn around, give it to Bruno. Bruno's going to plow ahead. He needed the 36 yard line. He got plenty more down to about the 31. About eight yards for Richie Bruno. Six carries and a touchdown for him already. As we're under 30 seconds to go in this first quarter already, this should be the last play of the game. Ball's at the 32. Proctor split out wide to the right. Well, Central brings a blitz there. Doesn't matter for Richie Bruno as he's going to plow ahead again. 
Shy of the 25 yard line. Should be about five yards. And they keep moving the marker here. They give Richie Bruno six yards on that carry. The ball is at the 26 yard line of Weld Central, and that's the end of the first quarter. Your beat diggers are up seven to nothing. We'll take a quick timeout, come back with the second quarter right here on 1010 KSIR, KSIR.com, and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Welcome back in to Beat Digger Football on 1010 KSIR. Start of the second quarter. Beat Diggers threatening again, up seven to nothing. Eric Rico's going to bootleg right. He's looking to throw it. He's got Brody Dick open. Brody Dick, ooh, bobbles it. Had a man on his hip, even if he caught it. I don't know that he was going too far. Eric Rico kind of put it right on the money. It looked like Brody Dick was looking to break a tackle before he caught the ball. And it goes as a incompletion. So they'll try over here on third down, third and a long four. Give it up the middle here, kind of off the left side. First down's picked up. Piles pushing the refs. And I like that game last week in Sterling. Taking their sweet time to blow the whistle well after forward progress has been stopped. Bruno picked up the first down. Ball spotted about the 15. Give him a gain of about six yards. Brush came out. Three running back set. It was an offsides on Weld Central. So that will give Brush a cheap five yards. First and five from the 10. Three running back set again. Turn around, hand it off to Bruno. Bruno's going to go off the left side, plowing ahead. Stop short. Of, nope. He punched it in. Richie Bruno from 10 yards out. Punches it in for a second score of the game. Brush up 13 to nothing with 11.28 to go in the second quarter. Two touchdowns on two drives. For Coach Rosenbrock. And his beat diggers are an extra point away from going up 14 to nothing on Weld Central. Eric Rico boots this thing a country mile. Extra point is good. Beat diggers up 14 to nothing. That drive started clear back at the 20 yard line. Had a lot of four and five and six yard pickups. Had a fourth down conversion and that is Beat Digger football at its finest. Your starters brought to you by B&B Appliance with over 30 years of experience. B&B can help match the appliances to your needs. Stop by 502 Enzyme Street in Fort Morgan. I know we're a quarter late, but that's what happens when there's only one guy working and technology isn't cooperating. It's senior night, as I mentioned, for your brush Beat Diggers. Their starters are their seniors. I'll run them down real quick. Number one, Grant Becker. Number eight, Wiley Eicher. Number 11, Hunter Proctor. Number 30, Rogelio Caldera. Number 37, Tanner Ludgate. Number 49, Brody Dick. Number 50, John Walter. Number 63, Cole Curtis. And number 67, Gunner Washburn. Eric Rico set to kick it back here. North to south. He gets a good boot on this thing. Good grief. That thing's going to hit at the goal line. Bounce in. Eric Rico's leg is well warmed up. Well Central Rebel starting lineup. Number one, Jace Coriolis. Number three, Elias Cornelius. Number four, Zach Miller. Number 13, Kale Schellenberg. Number 21, Marcelo Rossi. Number 56, Westo Barros. Number 58, Jeremiah Huck. Number 76, Jackson Dingus. Number 87, Riley Reese. Their head coach is Harrison Chisholm. A well-known name around Morgan County. Former coach of the Fort Morgan Mustangs. And he finds himself in an early hole here. 11.28 to go in the second quarter. Down two scores as Cornelius is going to get dragged down hard as the ball came out. As he faked the handoff and tried to go around the left side and he gets dropped in a hurry for a loss of, man, they marked this thing back a long ways. It's a great tackle by the brush defensive end. Goodness, they mark him back nearly six yards. Well, 
Weld Central will start it over back inside their own 10 yard line is where this play ends up. Good grief. They're going the wrong way in a hurry. I believe Bruno was in on that stop. Ball's at the nine yard line. And I don't know who carried the ball, but it didn't much matter because he wasn't getting out of the backfield anyway. Minute gone by on this drive and already it's a third and 20. They go trips right, shotgun, got a man out on an island to the left here. Cornelius runs a keeper off the right side. He's going to throw it down the sideline. Got a man open. Ooh, that ball was dropped. So from my view, it looked like he dropped it. He's going out of bounds, but he must have bobbled and catched it. But he was out of bounds when he did so. So that is an incomplete pass. And Well Central's going to turn it over on or I'm sorry, punt it back to Brush after three plays and negative 10 yards. 10.09 to go in the second quarter. Brush return man stands at the 40 yard line. High snap. Ooh, block punt. That punt is blocked. It rolls out of the back of the end zone. That'll be a safety for your Brush Beat Diggers. It was only a matter of time before we saw one of those this year. And the Brush Beat Diggers come up with a perfect rush as a Well Central punter was standing in his own end zone. High snap. Brush got back there in a hurry, blocked it perfectly. And it bounces out of the end zone for a safety. 10 20, oh, I'm sorry, 10.07 to go. In the first half, Brush now up 16 to nothing. As I write this down as fast as I possibly can, so that you guys aren't just hearing dead air. As I mentioned, Brush 4 and 2 overall, two game win streak. They've won four of their last five. The last game they lost was at Rifle. Rifle had a great game against Bennett, or I'm sorry, not Bennett, Basalt. With a safety, well, Central will punt it. Which I'm not sure in high school. It's been a while since I've seen a safety in high school. Where do they punt it from? It'll be punted from the 20-yard line. Brush was able to beat Weld Central in Kingsburg last year as well. Harrison Chisholm's got to be somewhat flabbergasted by how little success his offense has had here. So they kick it off from the 20. The ball travels to the 50. It's bobbled. Picked up by number 13, I believe, Elias Barraza, the sophomore. Doesn't get much of a return, maybe just a couple yards, but it's a great starting field position for Brush as they'll look to eat a big chunk of time off the clock here with 10 minutes to go in this opening half. Equitable savings and loan borrow locally from people you know. Equitable has been providing personal bankers to help you through all the steps. Stop by one of 10 locations across the plains or visit equitable-savings.com. Proctor will be split out wide to the right. Rico's going to drop straight back. Now he's going to roll to his right. He's going to loft it up. He's got a man open down the field. I believe that ball was bobbled, but it's caught by number number 20. Percy Odell comes up with the big catch. It was underthrown. He had to come back for it. The ball is just past the 25-yard line of Weld Central. Second pass attempt for Eric Rico. is a 25-yard pitch and catch to Percy Yodel right in the middle of the field. Rico's going to drop straight back, roll right again. He's looking. Goes to the end zone. He threw it behind his man. Had a chance there to be picked off, but it had some heat on it, so it got there in a hurry, and it falls incomplete. And it'll be second down. 
Eric Rico had a great, great night throwing the ball a week ago at Sterling. I think he only threw it a handful of times, but I don't know that he had an incompletion, but maybe one, if I'm remembering correctly. His coach did him a favor. He put him in some really nice positions, some easy throws where he's able just to dump it off. That was a tough throw here as Juan Sanchez breaks it off the left side. Juan Sanchez in a hurry. Golly, that kid's fast. Juan Sanchez pushes it in from 25 yards out. And I don't know that he was touched. Good grief. I asked Brush to eat a big chunk off the clock here in the second quarter, and they ate maybe a minute, 927 to go in the second quarter. Extra point is up and good. Score is 23 to nothing. Beat Diggers leave. This has been about as one-sided game as one could imagine. Everything going brushes way. Blocked punt, safety, long drives, quick drives. All touchdowns, no no field goals. Defensively, Brush has been really good. Brush touchdown brought to you by Stubbs Gas and Oil. One-stop shopping does exist. Gas, food, and all your travel accessories. Get off I-76 at exit 66A in Wiggins to visit them. Once again, 9.27 to go in the first half. Brush up 23 to nothing. Three touchdowns and a safety have gotten us here. Brush has scored on all three offensive possessions they've had. They will kick off to start the second half, but we're a ways away here with the way this game has gone. Return man catches it inside the five-yard line here. He's going to reverse field, try and go up the brush sideline. He's looking for the sideline. He gets there, turns something into nothing. I think he got out right at about the 20, maybe past. That's Cornelius, Jace Cornelius, the junior quarterback. We'll see where they mark him where he stepped out. He was going to be down at about the 10-yard line. He was able to reverse field and come back. They mark him at the 21. Old Central looking for something, anything. As they'll go shotgun here. Cornelius and Rossi to his left. Two receivers split out left. Hand off to Rossi. He's going to get across the 25. One of his better carries of the night. Picks up about six. Same formation here. Two receivers split out left. Tight end on the right. Ross and Cornelius in the backfield. Shotgun said they try hard count. They got brushed to jump earlier in the game. Off the right side, Rossi goes again. Shifty. He picks up the first down. Pick up of about 12, maybe 13 as he's across the 40. It's enough for Weld Central first down. I think that's only the second first down. I think they got one on their opening drive before they punted it back. Two receivers to the right here. Head end to the left. Direct snap to Cornelius. He's looking off the left side, looking for something, nothing doing. He's going to get dropped in the backfield. A little bit of a windy night. In brush, blowing kind of straight out of the north. That flag's really whipping now. Everybody looks nice and bundled up. I'm in just a sweatshirt because I'm in the booth here where it's pretty toasty. 7.42 to go. It was a loss of one for Cornelius. Second and 11. Rush up 23 to nothing. Hand off to Rossi here. Rossi spins out of a Curtis tackle. Rossi gets across the 50. He's going to be shy of a first. Give him 10 yards. Curtis had him after about a gain of maybe two or three. And he spun out of it. 
So now it's a third and one. Just in the brush territory at the 49. Well, Central's thinking to themselves, this is definitely four down territory. This Cornelius will take it under center. Do the brotherly shove, the tush push, if you will. Picks up a first down. Picks up about three. Well, Central taking their time here. Two receivers left. A couple tight ends to the right. Fake it to Rossi. Rossi's the lead blocker. Cornelius trying to go off the right side. Breaking tackle. Nope. Fumble. We'll see who comes up with it here. I believe Brush recovers it. They do. Brush football. That ball squirted down the field. I thought Cornelius had broken a tackle. But it was just the ball. Called Dare is the one that recovered it. I don't know who punched it out. That's a nice defensive stop after Weld Central appeared to find some offensive success. And now it was 6.43 to go in the first half. Brush takes back over here. They pitch it out. That pitch was behind Tanner Ludgate. He bobbles it and he just ends up falling on it in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of several. Call it a loss of six. Not a bad idea on Tanner's part, though, to just go ahead and fall on it. He had a couple Weld Central defenders coming in with some ill contempt in their eyes. Iker comes in motion left to right, turn around, give it to Tanner again. Here, Tanner will get back about five of that six that he lost. It'll be a long third down here for Brush at their own 38-yard line. Percy Odell jog a play in. Rudy's Tires, they have nine locations across northeast Colorado and Nebraska, which means there's always a location close by. Rudy's Tires brings you the 1010 preps and more every weekday. Visit rudystires.com for more. Well, Central bringing the house here. Eric Rico's going to roll to the right. He's just going to keep it. He gets across the original line of scrimmage. Doesn't quite get back to the 45-yard line. Might have been an option pass there, but Rico kind of running for his life on that bootleg. Picked up about five yards. It's a fourth and six. Maybe fourth and seven or a long six. They come out three running back set. From left to right, it's Curtis, Bruno, and Ludgate. Turn around, give it to Bruno. Bruno on fourth down, portion forward. Richie Bruno really close to a first down. I think he's got it. I think he dove forward. Gosh, I'm looking right down the first, first down marker, and they give it to him. It's a first down. Move the chains, boys. The nose of the ball is on the 49. Well, Central coaches are hollering and screaming that it's not, but they don't even bring the chains out on the field. They go ahead and mark it a first down. Brush comes out, same formation. Give it to Bruno again. Bruno off the left side. Bruno gets across the 45 into Weld Central territory, coming out on five minutes to go in the second quarter. Bruno already over 10 carries here. Picks up four. And I apologize when I go run through the stats at the end of the game. It won't be close to the official since I kind of missed the first possession for Brush. But they did score. Bruno had about a seven-yard touchdown run in that first possession. And that opened up the scoring as Brush leads 23 to nothing with 4.49 to go. In the second quarter, Brush takes their first timeout. Brush timeout brought to you by Better Electric. They cover all electric work from residential to commercial to agricultural. Better does matter. Call 970-521-1030. Halftime show brought to you by Boring Community College coming up here shortly. Once again, it's senior night. 
for your brush beat diggers as this is their last regular season home game. Got a couple more games on the season, but they're both away. Next Friday, the 20th, will be at University. And then the Friday after that, the 27th, we will be at Timnath. I'll be on that call alongside Paula Costa, who's going to travel west with me. As for Weld Central, they have university. Oh, I'm sorry. They played university last week, lost 56 to 27. Brush goes hard count here out of that timeout. Well, Central will play Timnath next week. So Brush comes out of that three running back set again. They fake the handoff. Rico's going to roll right. He's got Brody Dick down the sideline here. Brody Dick's going to have to come back to this ball. Ooh, nearly makes a beautiful catch. Rico had him if he'd have thrown it a little earlier, but he had to kind of wind up to get it down there. And it falls incomplete. Brody Dick nearly made a really, really nice contested catch, but the DB for Weld Central able to break it up. And I don't mind that play call at all. Weld Central is hell-bent on stuff in the run, which they haven't had much success doing, but they're bringing the house on nearly every play. Their safeties aren't super worried about it, about going over top of them. You watch them before the play starts, one of them, at least one of them, sometimes both, will always creep down. His brush on second down now. From the Weld Central 40, he'll give it to Bruno. Bruno will pick up a hard-earned couple yards. And it's a third and eight for Brush with four and a half to go in the second quarter. Gosh, if they could go up here before the end of the half. We would be well on our way to a running clock, which I know the fans would not mind because it looks cold out there. But I wouldn't know. Turn around, hand it off to Bruno. I'm third down. Bruno breaking tackles again. Good grief. He just dives forward again. That's the third time he's done that on either a long third or fourth down. He just knows where the first down marker is. And on third and eight, he picks up eight. Knows the ball's right on the 30. That's a first down. Richie Bruno playing the role of workhorse again for head coach Rosenbrock. And how could you not feel like you need to give it to him on every play? Good grief. Bruno hasn't had but one carry or a couple carries, two yards. The rest of them have been five or more. Rico looking down the field there. He's got a man open. No P.I. called as it falls incomplete. Perciola was the intended man again near that pylon down in the end zone. Rico just put a little too much air underneath it. Nodal had to come back for it. Eric Rico just won a five for 25 yards through the air, but when your running game's as strong as it is, it doesn't much matter. All that passing game is really good for us, just softening up the defense. So you can run it down their throats with number 44. Three running back set for Brush now. Turn around and give it to the man in the middle. That's Bruno. Bruno pushes forward for about seven. They mark him back. At the 25, just to pick up a five for Bruno. Tanner Ludgate will trot off. It'll be Bruno, Curtis, and Sanchez. Left to right in the backfield. Rico under center. I'd love to see a hard count here. And Coach Rosenbrock didn't like what he was seeing there. And he will take his second timeout of the half. This brush timeout.
brought to you by Bailey Mechanical. Getting your house the right temperature is difficult. Call 970-522-0471 and let Bailey Mechanical go to work for you. I don't mind that by coach at all. He saw something in that well central defense. You got timeouts, you might as well use them. And I know he's thinking the same thing. Get up here 30 to nothing in the first half and hopefully coast to a win. Skin brush probably their toughest test of the season coming next week at university. Out of the timeout, same formation. Same three in the backfield, Rico under center. They give it to Bruno up the middle. He's going to be stuffed. That looked like one of those plays where Coach Rosenbrock gave Rico a couple different plays to choose from. As Bruno picks up about three. It's going to be fourth and two, and they go hurry up here. Turn around, they give it to Bruno again. Bruno's got the first down as he dives forward. First down picked up indeed. Gosh, but Bruno's got about a three-yard head start. No matter how many guys hit him, he's just going to fall forward for at least a couple. He'll get a well-deserved breather here. So we're under two minutes to go. So we give it to Cole Curtis off the left side. Curtis. Pushes his way forward on first down. Inside the red zone. As Curtis is down. Inside the 10 yard line. Pickup of about five. Three running backs in the backfield again. Turn around, give it to Cole one more time. I think he's got enough for the first down. Let's see where they mark him. It's going to be. Mark him down at the 11. So it's. Well, they say 11 yard line, but the chain gang is laid down their chain. So it's about the, It's going to be first and 10 from the 10, or first and goal to go from the 10. They give it to Curtis for the third time in a row. Under a minute, clock's running. Eric Rico's down inside the five. Same formation, three running back set. Second down, goal to go. Turn around, give it to Cole again. Cole muscles his way in. Cole train, as they call him. It kind of looked like it there. Didn't look like it took a whole lot of effort, honestly, as Cole punches it in. That's Cole Curtis. Four carries in a row. And it pays off with a brush touchdown as Eric Rico. Extra point is up and good with 41 seconds to go. Brush up 30 to nothing over Weld Central. Give me just a moment to write this down. This brush is up 30 to nothing over the Weld Central Rebels. And if you're Coach Chisholm, now what do you do? You're fixing to go into halftime down by 30. They'll have 41 seconds to try and make something happen. Cornelius and Rossi have basically been shut down on the ground. No stats really worthy of mentioning. Rossi's got a couple carries of 13 and 10 yards, but other than that, it's been tough sledding for head coach Chisholm and his Rebels. Brush score brought to you by Miller's Landscaping. You put so much time and effort into your show animals, and we offer a wide selection of livestock feed and supplies. Stop by 19645 County Road Q in Fort Morgan. With the wind, it is back. Rico's kick travels down to the 10. It's caught by Cornelius. Cornelius gets down the Rebel sideline there. Gets down to their own 45. 
with 30 seconds to go. Pretty good starting field position here. About as good as you could hope for. As Rico actually was the one man who pushed him out of bounds. Ball's on the far side of the field. Well, Central's 45. Two receivers out left. Two tight ends to the right. Shotgun set. As Ross or Cornelius is going to break it down the right sideline. Gets pushed out of bounds at the 10. There was a brush beat digger jogging off the field. There should be a flag. There probably was either there should have been too many men. It's either too many men on the field and the refs missed it or Brush just played that play with 10 men. So I believe it was Cornelius. I could be wrong. I was I was expecting a flag to fly. I was waiting to see it. The refs haven't placed the ball yet. And I only chewed nine seconds off the clock. There's still 21 seconds. I believe Well Central has all three timeouts too. So the ball is inside the 20 at about the 14-yard line. About a 40-yard rush there for Welt Central. They give it to Rossi, I believe, up the middle. Rossi gets down inside the 10-yard line. Weld Central, I believe, calls the timeout. They should. 14 seconds. Pick up about four for Rossi. Weld Central timeout brought to you by Bank of Colorado. They believe in keeping things simple. Apply for the loan you need. For your dream home fully online, visit bankcolorado.com for all the information today. Rush needs to find a way to keep Well Central out of the end zone here. Paul Costa's got jokes. He says it's a light breeze outside. Oh, but the concession stand has got hot chocolate. All right. I have to run down at halftime and get me some. Out of the timeout, shotgun set again, two receivers to the right. Bobbled, ooh, bobbled snap there. Bobbled handoff. Rossi doesn't get any, anywhere. Well, Central burn it second timeout. That's fortunate for Brushers. Cornelius bobbled the snap and then nearly bobbled the handoff. Rossi just kind of grabbed it from him and went down in a hurry. Well, Central Timeout brought to you by Premier Farm Credit. For over 100 years, they've been providing affordable, reliable, and consistent credit. Visit PremierACA.com. All right, out of the second timeout, they'll flip the formation. Two receivers to the left. They're going to pass it. They go across the middle of the field. Ball was thrown way too high. Intended man if he'll turn his jersey. Believe number 84. Rhett Pique, or Peak. Rhett Peak, intended man. Pass falls incomplete, and Well Central is going to try a timeout here with five and a half seconds. Scores 30 to nothing. Well Central just looking to get on the board. They do get the second half kickoff. As I think Brush is going to get called for an offsides here. Oh, it is. It's offsides on Brush. They had a chance. So now head coach Chisholm, with four and a half seconds to go, he's got a decision to make. That five yards isn't going to be enough for a first down. It's going to be like fourth and a long three. And they're going to elect to still attempt the field goal. And what do you got to lose? Snap down, kick is up, and no good. Kick is no good. And that field goal apparently took four and a half seconds to be no good, and that's the end of the first half. So your bee diggers will take a 30 to nothing lead into the half. We'll take a quick timeout, come back with your halftime show brought to you by Moore Community College right here on 1010. 
KSIRKSR.com and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. 1010 KSIR. Welcome back in to Be Digger Football on 1010 KSIR, KSIR.com and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Halftime show brought to you by Morgan Community College. Start your associate degree, continue your education, or get a specialized certificate. Visit morgancc.edu. For more at the half, your brush beat diggers are up on the visiting Weld Central Rebels 30 to nothing. Weld Central has got one big run from Cornelius, their quarterback of 40 yards. That's their offense for the game. Essentially, Brush scoring drives. Bruno scored on a seven yard run with 8.10 to go in the first. He then scored again with 11.28 to go in the second. Immediately following that, Brush forced Weld Central into a three and out, and their punt was blocked into the back of the end zone for a safety. That was at 10.07 to go in the second. And then Juan Sanchez got in on the scoring party with 9.27 to go in the second as Brush went up 23 nothing. Then it took the rest of that quarter until Cole Curtis found the end zone with 41 seconds to go. All extra points were good. Brush goes up 30 to nothing, And they're one half of football away from moving on to 5-2 and two and 3-0 and oh in league play. Weld Central did win the coin toss to start the game and deferred, so they're going to get the second half kickoff. Tyler Carmen with you tonight flying solo. Next week we'll be at University. Paul Acosta will be by my side. We're waiting on the clock. Oh, there's still a couple, couple seconds left. Eric Rico's leg's been strong. He's going to have the wind at his back here for this third quarter. Brush had a great defensive stand to end that first half. As Cornelius took off for that 40-yard gain. With all three timeouts, Weld Central wasn't able to punch it in. From inside their own 15-yard line, they settled for a field goal attempt with four seconds to go on fourth and three. And that field goal attempt was no good, so they weren't able to score. In that first half, Rico's going to kick us off here to start the second. This ball is going to have the wind at its back and travel out of the back of the end zone, and Weld Central will start at their own 20-yard line. Weld Central found a little bit of offense there at the end of the first half. We'll see if they try and stick with it and if Coach Rosenbrock has made any adjustments to make sure that doesn't happen again. Shotgun set, two receivers to the right. Well, Central doing what they did in the first half. Come out the first play from scrimmage. They go a hard count. They get brushed to jump. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Pick up those cheap yards when you can. Two receivers split out to the right. They give it to Rossi. Rossi dances. Ludgate's got him wrapped up. Picks up maybe three yards there on his first carry of the second half. Rossi four yards on that. It'll be second and one after that run on the penalty. Two receivers out to the left now. Rossi to the left of Cornelius. They give the handoff to Rossi. Rossi goes around the right side. First down is picked up. Pick up a five and a first. Ball is at the 33-yard line of Weld Central. Minute gone by in this third quarter. I don't know what it is about second house, but they feel like they just move. So I know we're only three plays in, but it feels like they just move slower. Gosh, that looked like a false start there by Welch Central. No flags called, though. As Rossi kind of carrying that ball recklessly there. He kind of stuck it out. There, Ludgate should have took a swipe at that thing. Not a bad run for Rossi as he picks up seven. Seven. 
second and three. Two receivers split out left again. Rossi to the left of Cornelius. Cornelius is going to keep it this time. He doesn't wait on his blockers, and he gets dropped for a loss on his first carry of the second half. Gosh, he's got Rossi in the tight end out in front of him, but he just outruns his outruns his blockers, and he gets ahead of him, and then and he can't go back, and he can't go forward, and he ends up with a loss here. So it'll be third and five now as he lost a couple. Two receivers out to the right. They run it. They're going to run it to the wide side here. They try the hard count. Can't get him. Ooh, and they get their own guys. That's the worst. It'll be false start. So now it's going to be third and ten for Weld Central. Bummer, dude. 9.52 to go. Third quarter brush up 30 to nothing. Out of the huddle they come. Two receivers left. Two tight ends right. Shotgun set. Rossi to the right of Cornelius. Straight drop back here. Tanner Ludgate's coming off the right side. They run the screen. This is set up really nice by Weld Central. Receivers got room to run. Brush catches up to him quickly. First down's picked up. That screen's going to pick up about 12 yards as it gets across the 45. It's the first completion for Cornelius on his, on his fourth attempt through the air. And I did not get a chance to see the receiver's number. I apologize. White jerseys with light blue numbers. Not a great combo. As they give it to Rossi here up the middle. Again. Ooh, he bobbles the ball. Gosh, he wasn't even hit. He bobbled it. He tried just switching hands. And he ends up falling forward. Not a bad run, but, ooh, man, I, to I told you guys. He was kind of carrying it recklessly there on one of his last carries. It almost bites him there. He gets five yards on his 10th carry of the game. But he better put that thing away. They give it to him. Oh, the shotgun handoff again. He's driven back to the line of scrimmage. First down progress might give him a couple. It's going to be third and a long four here. They give him a yard on the carry. Ball's at the brush. 46-yard line. Far side of the field. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Two receivers out to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Gosh, the brush defensive backs play really far inside. Just ran a go route. If you're Weld Central. Timeout called, I believe, by Weld Central. That timeout brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants. Since 2003, they've been providing big firm product with small firm relationships. Visit westerneci.com for more. Seven fifty-seven to go. Third quarter, brush still up thirty to nothing. I was hoping this would be a running clock at the end of this third quarter, but well, Central's holding on to the ball here as brush trots back out. Out of the timeout, look for him to go hard count here. They're going to go pass. Tried to find number 84, I believe, Rhett Peak, out in the flat. And that ball was nowhere near where it needed to be. Peak didn't have the depth for a first down anyway. And it falls incomplete. So now it'll be fourth and four. Punt man for... Well, Central stands back at his own 40. Low snap. Gets it off. Good punt into the wind. Fair catch called for. Takes a bounce. Oh, it might have hit the back. Oh, it hit the back of Caldera. It took a bounce. Juan Sanchez has got to do a better job of waving everybody off. Is that punt basically bounced straight up in the air to hit the ground. Hits Caldera in the back who was setting up blocks for Juan Sanchez. And Weld Central is gifted this field position at the 20-yard line. They start at in the red zone. 
Brush does a good job forcing a punt and a bad bounce. Leads to Weld Central starting all over again. New quarterback in for Weld Central. It's number 15. He takes the rush off the right side. That's Troutner. Troutner goes for four. Gosh, that's the worst if you're Caldera. You're setting up block, and all of a sudden the ball hits you in the back, and the live ball. Man in motion right to left here. They run a little sweep around the left side, and Brush has got that bottled up in a hurry. As Cornelius returned as the quarterback. Smith's the ball carrier, and that ball goes nowhere. Number six, Jason Smith. Loss of yards on that play. So six and a half to go. Nearly halfway through this third quarter, Weld Central's possessed the ball the whole quarter thus far. Rush defense trying to hold them here on third and eight. Give it to Rossi off the right side. Rossi cuts it up inside, spinning, trying to make people miss. He's brought down about the 10 yard line. We'll see. They mark him short. I believe the ref just signaled first down. They, that they do. So it'll be first down from the 10. Goal to go. We'll give Rossi eight yards. It's what he needed, it's what he got. Well, Central taking their time in the huddle. Here we go. Under six minutes to go. Brush still holding on to the 30 point lead. Ooh, and they go heavy set here. Two fullbacks and a running back behind Cornelius. Under center, he turns around and hands it to Rossi, and Rossi bounces it off the right side, picks up maybe five. We'll see where they place it. Ludgate in on the tackle. They mark him at the six, give him four. It's a new formation here for Weld Central. They Bring it out again. I don't know exactly what it's called. It's an eye formation with two fullbacks. This time they give it to 12, who gets dropped in the backfield. Richie Bruno in there in a hurry. Ben Weaver gets his first carry. And it goes absolutely nowhere. Maybe even lost some there. Now it's third and goal from the six, maybe seven yard line. He lost some yardage there. They come out in the same formation. Rossi's back in the backfield. They fake the handoff to him. He's rolling right. He throws it up in the back of the end zone. That ball's either incomplete or caught for an interception. I don't know. I believe Brush comes up with the interception. They do. Gosh. Cornelius threw that into an absolute mosh pit of a crowd. Percy Odell, I believe, is the one that came down with it. Caldera was there as well. There was two intended receivers for Weld Central. And Brush turns the muffed punt into a great stop inside the red zone there. And Cornelius, Cornelius' troubles through the air continue as he throws his first pick of the game. And Brush will have their first offensive set with four and a half to go. In the third quarter, up 30 to nothing. Does Rico keep it up the middle? I believe that was going to be a bootleg, but he turned it upfield really fast. Basically ran into the, the teeth of the defense. He picks up a couple. Brush has scored on... On every offensive possession thus far, plus a safety on a block punt. Rico running the same thing again, running right. He's bottled up by four or five Rebels. And it's going to be a long third down here for Coach Rosenbrock's offense. Number 
I don't quite understand calling that twice in a row. Wiggins Electric. Count on Wiggins Electric for quick, efficient, and courteous service to keep you up and running. They provide you with the service products you need at the most critical time out of the huddle. Levi Cox will be split out to the left, Hunter Proctor to the right. Bruno and Ludgate in the backfield. Rico turn around. Fake the handoff. He's going to roll left this time. He is in deep trouble. He's just looking for the sideline. He's going to get dragged down for a loss of nearly 10. Not what they were looking for there either. And Brush will punt it back to Weld Central. Good news is they're going to punt it with the wind at their back. That was not a good possession there for Brush. Rico carries it three times for basically a loss of eight. Bruno's going to stand inside his own five-yard line. Return man for Weld Central standing at the 50. Good snap. Bruno gets a good kick. This thing's going to travel. Clear back to the 35. The return man bobbled it. He's got to pick it up and try to make something happen, and nothing will as he gets dropped for a loss there. Nearly back to the 30-yard line. That's a great, great example of flipping the field. Richie Bruno taking that win to his advantage. The first offensive possession that Rush hasn't scored in all games. Score remains 30 to nothing with 224 to go in the third. If both teams could just keep this thing on the ground, let's not worry about throwing it. We'll run this clock out and go home early. Well, Central returns to the offensive side of the ball. Rossi will take the handoff. Off the right side he goes. Across the 40. Juan Sanchez in on the tackle. They mark him shy of the 40 to 39. Still a pickup of 8 yards. Same formation. Two receivers left. Rossi to the left here. He takes the handoff. He goes off the left guard. Gets across the 40. First down picked up. Give him three yards in the first. Unofficially, 15 carries on the night for number 21. Marcelo Rossi. They didn't have to go in the third. I can't imagine how cold it is outside because my legs are getting cold in the boot. Goodness. Give it to Rossi again. Oh, my God. He's, oh, man. I thought he got tattooed, but that was just a really good block. Kind of a crazy sequence in the backfield. Rossi breaks it off for nearly 15 yards, giving 14 and a first into brush territory. A beat digger came flying in there, and I thought he absolutely tattooed Rossi, but he must have gotten tattooed himself, almost like kind of a blindside block because there was a lot of, a lot of speed and a cloud of dust there in the backfield. So now after the big run by Rossi, Troutman's in there. He takes the handoff, gets around the right side, gets to the Weld Central sideline. He's able to pick up a couple. We'll see where they mark him out at. I apologize. Ben Weaver was a running back there. He picks up two. Cordelius or turd. I'm going to stop telling you guys the formation they're in because it's the same one every time. Shotgun set, two receivers to either side. They're usually to the wide side of the field. Now it's Troutman in at running back. That's number 15. He picks up off the same running play a couple more. It'll be third and four. Couple carries on the night for Troutman. Or Troutner. Is it Troutman or Troutner? It is Troutner. My bad. Third and four. High snap. Give it to Rossi. Rossi dropped to the backfield. Good grief. Is that Juan Sanchez who came 
blitzing in every sense of the word off that right side. Drops Rossi in the backfield for a loss of about three or four. Now it's a long fourth and five. And Weld Central will elect to do whatever they're going to do on fourth down in the fourth quarter. That's the end of the third. No touchdowns, no field goals. Brush still leads 30 to nothing. We'll take a quick timeout. Come back with the fourth and final quarter right here on 1010 KSIR. KSIR.com, the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Welcome in to the fourth and final quarter from Beat Digger Stadium as your Beat Diggers lead. Well, Central Rebels 30 to nothing at the start of the fourth. It was fourth down for the Rebels. They ran a nice screenplay to Rossi. Rossi picked up 15 and the first. And then on top of it, there's a roughing the passer call that's going to push Brush deep into their own territory here. We'll see that Martin. They, well, Central might be in the red zone after the penalty. It's a nice screenplay set up there by Weld Central. Might be the best offensive play they run all game. And they are indeed in the red zone at the 15-yard line. Shotgun set here. Two receivers to the left. Give it to Rossi. Rossi's trying to bounce it out to the right. He gets dragged down hard from behind by Juan Sanchez. No gain on that carry. Nearing 20 carries for Rossi on the night. Not much to show for it, though. By my records, just two or three carries in the double digits. Just your brush offense, that's not a big deal. Five yards in a cloud of dust is Brush's mantra. Well, Central, I think, would like some chunk plays here as they're going to throw a pass out to one of those receivers. That's the first time all game. Pass is complete to Zach Miller. It's going to be good for about eight yards. Haswell, who had that great defensive play last week at Sterling, was in on the tackle. So now third down. Give it to Rossi, I believe. Rossi's going to pound it in. First down's picked up, but no touchdown. It's going to be first and goal. So Weld Central threatening here. Give, give Rossi four yards. In the first, he was down at the one. Out of the shotgun, they'll go again. Looking to punch this in for the first score of the game. They give it to Rossi. Rossi's going to be stuffed. No doing there. They'll try over here on second. Under 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. They give it to Rossi again. It is a touchdown for Weld Central as he pushes it through for Weld Central's first score of the game. 9.41 to go in the first, first I'm sorry, in the fourth quarter. We'll see if they try the extra point or like to go for two. They're going to try the extra point. Snap down. Ooh, it's blocked. Extra point attempt is blocked. Brush. Holds on to the 30 to 6 lead. Well, Central's first score of the game. Brush has only had one offensive possession in the second half. And it was a quick three and out on three Eric Rico runs that gained a couple yards and a yard and then a big loss. We'll see if head coach Rosenbrock can find a way to make their second possession of the half be the last possession of the game.
Weld Central will get a chance to kick off with the wind at their back. Weld Central score brought to you by Van Wyck Insurance. Insurance from over 60 lines to help you find the right one to fit your buzzet. Budget. Stop in and see Van Wyck Insurance at 508 West Main in Sterling. It's the coolest name on the sponsor sheet, by the way. Van Wyck. Especially how it's spelled. Kickoff is going to travel down to about the 30, but it's going to bounce out of bounds. Ooh, good grief. A little bit of extracurriculars there. No flags thrown, though, except for the illegal procedures. The kickoff went out of bounds. I said that was their first time kicking off with the winner back. That, that's a lie. They kicked off to start the game with the winner at the back, and it was the same uh, same result. Two kickoffs for Weld Central, both of them. Illegal procedure penalties. It was kicked out of bounds. So Brush will get some good starting field position here at their own 35. They'll come out to run back to receiver set. Turn around, a little misdirection here. They give it to Tanner Ludgate. Ludgate's going nowhere. Dropped in the backfield for a loss. First carry of the second half for Ludgate. Reese in on the tackle for Weld Central. Rico under center again. Give it to Bruno. Bruno's going to go up the middle, plunge ahead for a yard. Richie Bruno is a ball carrier right down by number 72. Give Bruno just a yard here. Third and a long nine. Percy Odell jogging playing. Bruno Nugget in the backfield again. Rico under center. Give it to Bruno. Bruno goes up the middle. Gets maybe a yard with some forward progress. Brush seems content to run three straight, very basic run plays and punt it back to Weld Central. Clock's going to be under eight minutes by the time Bruno punts this thing into the wind. Gosh, you're Weld Central. I think you'd bring the house. Cause I don't know that Bruno's going to get a good kick here as the wind's still whipping right into his face. Kicks it high. It gets across the 50. The wind holds it up, and it takes a Weld Central bounce towards that sideline. It'll roll out of bounds over there between the 40 and the 45 of Weld Central, and they'll take back over with 7.44 to go in the fourth quarter. I apologize. If this second half broadcast has been rather boring, it's been somewhat of a boring game thus far. Since Brush was able to Hold well central to a missed field goal attempt to end the first half. This the second half has been a lot of nothing. As Rossi makes a nice move, bounces it outside after a couple broke tackles. He gets across the 50 into brush territory. Let's see where they mark it here. I think you're going to mark it just on the other side of the 50. That they do. Give him seven. 20 carries for Marcel Rossi on the night. Cornelius shotgun snap here. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to bootleg out to the left. I don't know if he got the first down. I believe he got just enough. Indeed, they signal it first down three yards, and he got out of bounds. So Weld Central picks up the first. Clock stops with seven and a half to go in the fourth. If you can stick it out through the end, got a lovely post game show brought to you by Advanced Agri Solutions. Get a, get a chance to talk with head coach Rosenbrock. 
get his thoughts on what should be a pretty good win. As Rossi takes another handoff. Rossi picks up about three. Ball is at the brush 44 yard line, far side of the field, well, central, headed south. Straight drop back here as, as Cornelius took an absolute shot from Juan Sanchez. And I think we're going to get an unsportsmanlike conduct as Sanchez was walking away from Cornelius. Cornelius, I mean, Sanchez drilled him. The pass falls like complete. But I think Sanchez was getting, I think Sanchez is going to get called for taunting or unsportsmanlike conduct or something. I don't know if it's a illegal, I'm sorry, don't know if it's going to be roughing the passer or if it's going to be something else. Oh, they called P.I. Called P.I. down the field. That penalty is going to be declined. They're going to take the other penalty against Sanchez. And that helps Weld Central tremendously. Ball's all the way down to the B-Digger 29 now. As there should be a false start call here. That'll give Brush back five yards. Oh gosh, no. no. <laughs> well, Central's gonna have another false start. That tight end on the right side is just itching to blow somebody up. And he, I don't even know if the center had his hand on the ball yet. <laughs> so it'll be first and 20 from clear back at the 39 yard line. Man. Direct snap, give it to Rossi. Rossi will go up the middle. Herrera in on the stop. Rossi just a couple there. 22 carries. For their starting running back. He's just a junior. He'll be around next year. Should be a very good. Him and Cornelius, both juniors. Should return next year. Low snap. Pump fake down the sideline. Percy there. Knocks it down. That ball was overthrown. Didn't have a chance. Percy made sure it wasn't going anywhere. Pass falls incomplete. It's a really pretty ball. Just kind of overthrown. A good pump fake, good play design, and good route. Percy Gold just read it perfectly and was right there waiting. So it'll be third and forever with 6.05 to go in the fourth. Well, Central needs the 19-yard line. They're going to give it to Rossi. Rossi's not going to get it. He's going to get down inside the 30. Pick up of a handful here. He's back basically to the original line of scrimmage. So now fourth and ten. Shotgun set to receivers to the left. Rossi's to the left. Fake the handoff. Cornelius looking down the field. He's going to scramble to his right. Flag fly should be holding. Cornelius gets out of bounds. First down is not going to be picked up. This penalty should just be declined. Brody Dick was the one that pushed him out along the brush sideline. Flags land at about the 21 yard line. The 
They do indeed decline the penalty. Benwell Central turns it over on downs to Brush with 5.18 to go in the fourth. As we make our way towards the end of this game, Brush only two offensive possessions in the second half. They haven't amounted to much. They run basically six straight run plays that haven't amounted to much and they seem very content to just run this clock out. Don't try anything fancy. They'll bring in their heavy set here. Three running backs behind Rico. Give it to Richie Bruno who goes off the left side and cuts it up the field. Hard run by Bruno. It's going to net him about five. Richie Bruno makes his living on five yard runs. He's going to be wrapped up here though on second down and pushed back. No gain. And it's third and five quickly with 440 to go in the fourth quarter. Might have given him a yard there. Still third down along four. Three running backs. Give it to Bruno. Who's wrapped up immediately. Well, Central's just bringing the house over the center and guards and wrapping Bruno up. Nothing doing there, and it's fourth down quickly again for Brush. So now fourth down again. They'll go through running backs. Brush is going to go for it here. They'll try a hard count and get them to jump. No, they're not going to run a play. They're just trying to get to hard count here to get to cheap five on a first, but I think Coach Rosenbach's going to burn a timeout here. As this clock ticks down under 340. That's, I think Brush, who everyone should have known, was not going to run a play. We'll take a false start penalty and back him up five yards. Doesn't really matter. They were going to punt it anyway. So Richard Bruno's going to have to punt it in the wind again with 3.34 to go. Richie Bruno stands at his 10. It's a good boot off, but this thing just gets hung up in the wind. It bounces at the brush. 35 takes a brush bounce across the 40. Caldera will pick it up at about the 42, and that's where World Central will take over with 315 to go in the game. A nice high punt, but man, it gets hung up there in that wind. That wind looks like it's blowing about 25 mile an hour. Gordon Insurance, be prepared for everything life throws at you. Get car insurance, life insurance, farm insurance, crop insurance at Gordon Insurance. Visit GordonINS.com today. So indeed, at the brush 42 is where Weld Central takes over. Cornelius in the shotgun. Rossi to his left. They give it to Rossi. Rossi tries going up the middle. He's bottled up. He pushes forward with some help from his linemen. Picks up 0-4 or so. We're under three minutes to go in the fourth. This second half cannot get over quick enough. Goodness. I apologize to the listening audience. Kind of a snooze fest. I don't imagine it's much better than watching the donkeys, though. So Glad you're with us as Rossi's going to get pushed back. Forward progress is going to give him one or two, I do believe. Indeed, it's a couple. It's a third and five. They're in a short five. Cool. 
Third and a short five. Rossi has a shotgun, fakes the handoff. He's going to roll right, looking right. Look, he's getting trouble. He sneaks up the middle there, throws it deep, out throws everybody. Intended man was Troutner, I believe. And Cornelius has struggled, to say the least, through the air. Just three completions on 11 attempts. Throw out an interception there as well, and it's tough sledding through the air. Not much better on the ground for Rossi. Rossi's going to have quite a few yards, but that'll happen when you run it 25 times. A lot of empty yards, though, as there really hasn't been much to speak of it. Weld Central was gifted a great field position on that muffed punt. They were able to put it in. Here's Cornelius is going to fake the handoff and roll to his left. Makes a pretty nice throw to his tight end in the flat. Would have been good enough for the first down, and instead it falls incomplete. And Weld Central will turn it over on downs with a minute 44. And Brush can finally run this clock out here. I do believe Coach Rosenbrock is going to get his seniors in the game as well. As I see Grant Becker jogging in as well. Again, I apologize. The second half, there hasn't been much to talk about, but do stick around for our post-game show. Brought to you by Advanced Agri Solutions. We'll get Coach up here. Talk about the win. As Becker's going to take the pitch off the left side. Becker gets himself a carry. Picks up some decent yards. They give Becker just a yard on that carry. Clock's going to be under a minute here. Instead, Weld Central will burn a timeout. I think they had too many players on the field. 109 to go. Fourth and final quarter, Northeastern Junior College brings you this Weld Central timeout. Whether you're a traditional or non-traditional student looking for an associate's degree or a specialized certificate, visit njc.edu. Just so you know, a late score by the Broncos is now 16-8. Oh, 16-8 is a late score in the Kansas City-Denver game. Six minutes to go in the game. It would be so fitting for Denver to beat Kansas City. I believe it's 15 in a row they've lost. Going back to the Truman administration. At least what it feels like anyway. Just a whole lot of bad football up there at the base of the Rocky Mountains. Nearly unwatchable. Out of the timeout, Brush, second and ten. Or second in the long nine, I should say. Ball's out. Rico hands it off. Running back gets hit. Ball squirts loose right into the arms of Rico. Rico picks it up, and it's going to be a loss, but Brush will retain possession. As the clock ticks under a minute here, it'll be third down and forever, like third and 18. Or I'm Marker says third down, but Brush looks to be in. Oh, they're in victory formation. That makes sense. Proctor was saying it way back to 15 like he was going to punt it away. but Instead, Eric Rico will take a knee on third down. That should be the end of the game. Brush is going to hold on to win and beat Relt Central 32-6. Brush will move to 3-0 and in the league, 5-2 and overall. Welt Central will drop to 0-3 in the league and three and four overall we'll go ahead and take a quick time out i'll gather up the stats we'll come back with your post game show brought to you by advanced agri solutions right here on 1010 ksir ksr.com and the eastern plains sports network welcome in to your brush beat digger post game show brought to you by advanced agri solutions get a full plan of seed food and water for your field now is the time to begin your planning for next year's growing season call dusty or roxy at 970-571 Two zero two four. This game had a wonderful, beautiful first half by our Brush Bee Diggers as they score 30 points in that first half. 
and they would only get about three offensive possessions in the second half, but they didn't need them as they hold off the Weld Central Rebels with a final score of 32-6. We'll run down the stats here as Coach Rosenbrock is talking to his team as they go up 3-0 and in league play, 5-2 and overall. They're setting themselves up nicely with two games left in the regular season. First, stat-wise for the Weld Central Rebels, they fall to 3-4 and overall, no and 3 in the league. Rossi carried the load on the ground, 25 carries for 119 yards. Cornelius, the quarterback, handful of carries for 46 yards. Troutner had a couple carries for 9 yards as well. Cornelius threw the air, 3 of 12 and an interception for about 40 yards. Rossi and Miller caught uh, the bulk of his completions there. Rossi scored with 9.41 to go in the fourth. The extra point was missed. That got him on the board for the first time all game there in that fourth quarter. For your brush beat diggers, Richie Bruno carries a load on the ground again. Unofficially, 20 carries for 88 yards. I missed the first possession because of our technical difficulty, so I'm sure Bruno went for over 100. Bruno had himself a couple more scores as well. Ludgate toted the rock seven times for 44 yards. Sanchez had himself a couple runs, a 25-yarder um, that he scored on as well. Cole Curtis got in on the rushing game as well. He scored uh, on his fourth carry, fourth consecutive carry, uh, 15 yards and a score for him. Becker got a run there at the end of the game as well. It was senior night, so it was good to see some of those seniors get in on the action. Eric Rico just won for five, 25 yards through the air. Odell had a nice catch there in the game, but again, it was the Richie Bruno story as uh, Coach Rosenbrock makes his way up here. Bruno scored with 8.10 to go in the first. He scored again with 11.28 to go in the second. Uh, Brush had a safety with 10.07 to go in the second. Sanchez scored uh, not shortly after there with 9.27 to go in the second. Curtis scored with 41 seconds to go in the second. That was what put him up 30 to nothing. And, Coach, that was all you needed as we'll welcome in head coach Joe Rosenbrock. Kind of a weird second half. You only had three offensive possessions, but you uh, you didn't really need them as no. you uh, you guys kind of just dominated that first half. Yeah, I mean, you say we don't really need him. We wish we would have scored on uh, even more. And you feel like dominated the third or the, the first and second quarter. Really, the second quarter was a onslaught of our offense and our defense played great. Um, but you can't you can't say anything bad about a win. Our kids are kids were tough. It's a it's a cold game and it's hard for a kid sometimes to get get excited for this on the sideline and our all kids are huddled up and. Um, the atmosphere is just what it is. It's a Thursday night game with very few people in the stands, and it's cold, and nobody wants to be there. And we, you know, but we came in with a win, and uh, that's good. That's great. It's another league win. Now we're now we're getting we're at five and two, and um, that's that's a great record to have going into university. And they're going to be a tough and, uh, uh, opponent next week, and it's great to have some success moving into that game. The the real challenges come here in the next couple of weeks is you're going to want to uh, you're traveling to university next week. What do you know about uh, the Bulldogs thus far? Very athletic. Uh, our scout film with uh, World Central was against university, so they're very athletic. They're well coached. They've got a good coach, and he's been there for a long time, and he's built his program, and uh, they know how to win. That's the one thing. University was in the uh, semifinals two years ago, and last year they won the first round of the playoffs, so they were in the quarters. They're a team that's starting to build a lot of tradition, um, and then that, that's hard to lose when, when you're pretty good. So they're very athletic, well coached, like I said, but they got some tradition, and we're going in, into their place. So it's going to be a it's going to be something we have to make sure we prepare for and focus in on this entire week, and start starting really this weekend um, with recovering this for the kids, but also coaches. We need to start breaking down some film and um, getting the game plan for them before you get there. Uh, this is your last home game, regular season home game. You were able to have senior night. Talk about your seniors and the ones that play a bunch, but the ones that don't maybe get to play as much as they want to, but they're they're as important part of the team as you can have. What's uh, what stood out to you about this senior class? Uh, it's great. This is my first senior class because this, this is my fourth year in Brush. So I saw this is the first time I've seen four a group all four years all the way through. And what stands out to me is just – the growth that a kid can make in, in, in their maturity, physically and mentally, their leadership, all that stuff from when they're a freshman, they come in and they're squarely 
Uh, you know, they don't really have too much self-awareness of what's going on outside of them and their impacts on other people. And then you see now the seniors and how they're leading our school, they're leading um, our stretches and practice, they're leading the huddle. They, I mean, that's what stands out to me. I mean, there's a lot of kids that don't get the opportunity, don't go out for sports and get that opportunity to do that. And like you said, there are some seniors that don't play as much, but they're still, they still stuck it out for four years. Why? Because it's worth it. I mean, they take something, they value something in, in playing sports and playing football here at Brush. And hopefully that's a, a testament to how everybody gets treated um, in our program. But it's, it's, it's a, it's a special class because, like I said, it's my first uh, one that I've seen all four years. So you can really see where they came in and where they're leaving, and uh, really where they where they're here yet, or where they're here now, and because it's not yet, you know, we're still not done, and they still have some growth to go. But that's that's the great thing about coaching is you get to see kids grow up um, and just make an impact on on not sports at all, on the impact of their life, their community, and um, just the maturity of a young man. Right on. Good stuff, Coach, as always. Good luck next week at university. We'll hope to uh, get a chance to talk to you after another great uh, league win. And you know, I know it's a cold and windy night, but what is it? Hey, it's always a great day to be a V-digger. Absolutely. That is head coach Joe Rosenbrock after a good league win over the Weld Central Rebels. Once again, uh, post game show brought to you by Advanced Agro Solutions. Get a full plant of seed and water for your field. Call Dusty or Rock Seat 970-571-2024. Richie Bruno carries the rock for two scores over 100 yards on the ground. Your brush beat diggers take down the Weld Central Rebels. 30-6 to six is your final. Thank you to Rose back at the station doing a great job as always working through the technical difficulties. We apologize to our listening audience for having those, but sometimes it just happens. And on a cold and windy night, it was bound to happen. So thank you to all the fans for coming out and supporting this team. It's the last regular season home game, but I got a feeling that we'll see them down the road here again. Once again, final score, 32-6. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to 1010KSIR, KSIR.com, the Eastern Plains Sports Network. For Rose, I'm Tyler Carmen. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week from University, 7 o'clock kickoff. Talk to you then.